Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Life here at Northern Hills United Methodist Church. My name is Herschel Krigbaum. I'm a lay servant here at the church. And as always, we're excited that you are joining us on this Wednesday to recharge your spiritual batteries. Uh, this evening, we have the honor of having a message from Susanna Watson. And the title of her message, Is There Really No Evidence for God's Existence? It's gonna be a great message and we're looking forward to hearing that from her. Remember to check out our website, nhumc.org to find out everything that's going on here in the church through the summer months as we approach the summer months. Uh, there's a lot of activities going on, so please plug in there so you can find the information that you need to plug into what you would like to do here at the church. So, Also, we want to hear your prayer requests and your praise reports. Please send those to prayer at nhumc.org. If you had a praise report that you said out loud, Lord, we give you praise. Praise God. If you had a prayer report that you said out loud, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Glorious and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, and we thank you for Miss Susanna Watson, who has stepped up to the plate to, del to deliver your message on this Wednesday evening. Father, we thank you for all your blessings and everything that you do in our lives. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hi, Northern Hills. My name is Susanna Watson. I'm the youth director here. And today we're pondering the question of, is there really no evidence for God's existence? So what do we really mean by evidence? There are really two kinds of evidence. There's direct and there's indirect evidence. So direct evidence is eyewitness testimony. And indirect evidence is everything else that supports the case. So let, let's consider our direct evidence. There's really a large body of direct evidence for God's existence. For instance, there's a ton of testimony of the observed resurrection of Jesus. Now we have the common examples that we know of are the women at the tomb, the, the disciples after that. But did you also know that there was at one time a group of 500 different people that saw Jesus after the resurrection? Now, some would might argue, well, that was a hallucination. But 500 people that had the exact same hallucination? No, that is far, far, far unlikely. So there, there's plenty of direct evidence of God's, of Jesus's resurrection which proves God's existence. There's also the testimony of those who have experienced a miraculous intervention of God. You know, I have the privilege of going on youth trips every summer, and I am always amazed at seeing kids and teenagers experience the miraculous intervention of God, some for the very first time. Just recently, I, I got back from camp, and I was in a room with 1,500 people, and looking around the room, it was so obvious that people were having this miraculous intervention with God. How could we all be experiencing something that wasn't real? It was so obvious that that moment when a kid comes to know Christ for the very first time, that there was something that was real that they were experiencing. And it's really a sight to behold when you get to see that. Some of you have seen that in your own family's lives and other people that you know. And every time I see it and I experience it, I'm reminded of the very realness of God. But let's talk about some of the indirect evidence of God's existence. How about like a universe that came into existence from nothing? I mean, when you really think about the universe, it's kind of, it's far beyond our imaginations. How about the implausible appearance of fine tuning in the universe? all of the things that had to go exactly right for the universe to exist as it does, or the miraculous origin of life from inorganic matter, and the improbable existence of information in DNA. All of this indirect evidence is most reasonably explained by a divine creator. I, I think we really see the evidence of God in three major categories. And the first is through creation. I don't know about you, but I'm truly astounded by God's creation. A few years ago, I went on a trip to New Mexico, and when I was coming back, I decided I was going to go and see Paladero Canyon in the panhandle of Texas. 
Now, if you've ever been to that area of Texas, everything there is just flat. And in the summer, everything is flat and brown. <laughs> and so it's kind of astounding when you're driving along and everything's been flat, flat, flat. And then all of a sudden there's this huge canyon in the middle of nowhere. And I remember when I saw that canyon in that moment, like everything had been so predictable for so long on that drive. And then bam, wow, this beautiful, beautiful piece of God's creation. And if you've never been there, I highly encourage you to go and check it out because it's really a neat thing to experience. And as I was sitting there and, and taking in the canyon, I thought, wow, God's creation is, is just so big and so astounding. And it's so obvious how much he loves his creation. And the other thing that I remembered is he loves his creation so much to create all of this beauty, but he loves us so much more than even that. And that's just a little extra for you today. But the second thing we, we see um, in, in God's creation is when we really think about the human body. The, the amount of things that have to go exactly right in our human body for us to function normally, I mean, it is, I, I, I can't even begin to comprehend it, everything that has to go right for us to just function in a normal manner. But... It, it happens. Just me being able to talk and breathe and blink and all of those things right now, there's got to be something behind it, behind me, my creation, that makes me have that ability to do all those things. When people have studied DNA, it's really quite astonishing the level of genetic information that is held just in our DNA. And it simply could not be explained without an intelligent author and creator. The second thing I wanted to talk about is the existence of conscience. When you really think about, you know, people talking about, well, I just had this gut feeling. Where does that come from? We have that gut feeling of something's right or something's wrong. It just seems really odd that that would just be just exist without something giving us that conscience, that gut feeling. And I think that the existence of a conscience that 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 knowledge of there's something good, there's something wrong. I think that's support for the existence of God. And the third thing is communication. A, a divine being communicating with us. That seems really, really strange for someone that hasn't experienced God. But yet God communicates through a, to us through all sorts of ways. The m most meaningful that we know of is God's Word. You know, when you really think about God's Word, the, the, the Bible, and the fact that it still exists and it's so uh, close to the original manuscripts that we have. We have thousands upon thousands of ancient manuscripts of the Bible, and there's not even a single other book that has been preserved like God's Word has. But we also have prayer, and people are, have this ability to communicate with God, and they sense Him speaking to them through a still, small whisper. And that's different for different people, but yet God still communicates. There must be something to it if so many people are able to experience communication with God and from God, but through His Word and through prayer. And so I would challenge you to really explore all of the evidence of God's existence. There's plenty of resources out there that support that there really is a one true God. And so today I would challenge you to consider all of this evidence so that you can also have these conversations to say, yes, God is real and God is the one true God. And I'm so glad that he has a presence in my life. Have a great day. Thank you, Susanna, for that great message on is there really no evidence for God's existence? Remember, check out our Facebook page, our YouTube page, Twitter, and Instagram to find out things that are going on here at the church. And again, our church website at nhumc.org. Please join me for this benediction. May the grace and the peace and the love of God rain down upon you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, everybody. See you next week.